Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to continue with our artificial intelligence terminologies and one of the important terminologies in AI and LLMs or large language models is the concept of embeddings. Let me show you what I mean. So in the context of LLMs or large language models, embedding refers to a way of representing words, phrases, sentences, and documents as dense vectors of numbers. These vectors can capture the semantic meaning of the text, allowing the model to understand and work with language more efficiently. Let me show you. Here, let's assume that I have an embedding model. And this embedding model is going to take one word, let's say queen. Basically, what we do here before we train these artificial intelligence models is that we employ what we call an embedding model. The embedding model takes in text and then convert this input text to a vector that looks like this. So let's say the word queen is going to be encoded, kind of represented in a vector format as nine, seven, and eight, okay? I know it sounds like a kind of crazy, like where, where did we even come with these numbers, right? So let me show you what I mean by that with a practical example. Let's assume that I would like to represent four words in what we call it semantic feature space. These words are man, woman, boy, and girl. So we would like to put that on a semantic feature space. And what we're gonna have is we're gonna have actually two semantic features. One of them is gonna be gender. The other one is gonna be age here on the Y axis. So these are what we call it semantic features. This is what we call it semantic feature space. And please note that here, all I wanna do is I wanna represent these four words. So these words are simply man, woman, boy, and girl. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, the word man, for example, would be represented as one and seven. So man here, it's going to be one and seven. The idea here is that on the age here, because man kind of refers to maybe an older, I would say, group. That's why we're going to give it that number seven here to kind of indicate if that it's a man or a boy, as an example. So a boy would be somewhere in here, for example, because on the age axis, man is usually older than a boy. Let's keep going. Let's represent a boy. That's what a boy basically looks like. It's going to have on the gender here column, it's going to have the same number, one, because they kind of represent kind of the same same thing, I would say. But here, the age, they will differ because a boy is usually younger than a man. Let's keep going. Let's assume I would like to represent, let's say, a woman, and a woman would be somewhere in here. They're going to have the same age pretty much as a man, but the gender here's number is going to be very different. So he's going to be, let's say, nine, for example. So we're going to encode the women here in as a number is going to be nine and seven and that will be the vector representation of that word let's keep going let's assume we're going to represent a girl and girl we're going to be somewhere here it's going to be the same i would say axis as well as uh, as a woman but it's going to be different on the age why because a girl is usually younger than a woman okay that i would say it's pretty straightforward okay makes sense so let's go ahead and have a quick quiz how or where can we represent, let's say, grandmother, grandfather, and a child? So I want you to please go ahead, give this quick quiz, I would say, a try, maybe pause the video, and I'm going to show you the answer afterwards. Try to represent these three words here on that semantic space. Okay. All right, so I hope you are able to solve the quick quiz. Let's go ahead and show you. So what I got here is these, of course, these are the four words. What you notice is if I would like to represent grandfather, for example, here, it's going to be represented somewhere here. And of course, it makes sense because the age of a grandfather is going to be older or higher as a value than a man. And of course, higher than a boy as well. But it's going to be on the same axis or the same kind of gender here part. What I got, let's say a child, because a child, I did not specify whether it's, a, let's say, a boy or a girl. It's going to be somewhere here in between. And finally, a grandmother will be somewhere there because the age, of course, is going to be older than a woman and so on. 
And that is going to be the vector representation of these words. The child is going to be 5 and 2. Grandmother is going to be 9 and 9. Grandfather is going to be 1 and 9. Okay. So what I could do next is I can actually do this in a 3D space. So what we have done here, it was a 2D space because I only got two features. What I could do now is let's assume I would like to represent the words king, queen, prince, and princess. What you notice is that these words still share the same features as before, so I can kind of get an idea about the age, about let's say the gender as well, based on this. But what we have right now is I have an additional feature which stands for royalty, because these words vary completely as kind of comparing it to let's say a man or a boy as an example, right? Because these means royalty and it means that they have a higher royalty status compared to other people, as an example. So to distinguish man from king and woman from queen, we need to introduce a new semantic feature that sets them apart. And we're gonna call this feature royalty, and now I'm gonna add a third dimension to my space. And here we go. So now I got age, I got gender, which is similar to what we have done before, and now I added an additional dimension, which is royalty. And now if I would like to, let's say, represent, for example, a king, a king is going to be 1, 8, but now they're going to have a higher royalty status, going to be 8 here on the royalty um, feature. You will also see that queen, they have a higher royalty as 8, prince as 8, princess as 8 as well, and you should be able to see them there because the royalty is at value of 8, so you should see them at the end there, okay? And of course, let's say the king, because it's going to be on the older side, the age here is going to be higher as well. But they're going to be at level of one when it comes to the gender, similar to what we have done before, because they kind of represent the man part. Okay. And this is, I would say, kind of vector embedding in a nutshell. Just imagine right now, if you have, let's say, a word that can have multiple semantic meaning. So now I can represent them on a multidimensional feature space and that's what i'm going to be showing you right now in tensorflow so you can go ahead and click on that link and that is going to direct you to projector.tensorflow.org all right so what you can see here is the vector embeddings basically for all the different words that we have in the english language so now you can go ahead and kind of zoom in if you will and yeah you should be able to see let's say downtown if you just kind of zoom in a little bit you'll be able to see all these different embeddings of all the different words in the multidimensional space. You can go ahead and let's say I want to search for, for example, the word king, okay? And you, if you actually click on it, now you should be able to see this is the word king. And now you should be able to see the nearest points in the original space. Kings, queen, throne, son. So all these words are kind of linked together. And that's why you should be, it's a, you should be able to see them here kind of as neighboring points. And that's the idea of vector embedding in a nutshell. Of course, there's a lot of um, uh, features here and uh, parameters that you can play around with. I just want to show you from a very high level, what do you mean by word embedding? Okay, what I could do as well is I can go ahead and if I change, for example, these models, and instead of working with words, I can also work with images. So if I say, let's say, MNIST with images, um, you should be able to see right now the vector representation of various writings here of the numbers between 0 and 9. So let's say if I would like to look for, for example, number, let's say 6. So if you just click on it, now you should be able to see if you zoom in, these are all the vector representations of the number 6. So people write 6 differently, right? So you might write like this, maybe like a little, little bit like, you know, skew to the right, skew to the left. These are the various representations, right? But they all have kind of similar features. And that's why they are grouped together. And that's why you will see if you type six, these are all the matches that appear in here. And this is the is going to be the vector representation of these images in the vector space. Okay, and that's kind of the embedding in a nutshell. And that's it. That's all I have for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we're going to cover OpenAI API. Please stay tuned. Best of luck. And I'll see you in the next lecture.